In this video, I'm going to be going over the installation and configuration of Docker Toolbox. Docker Toolbox can be run on Mac or Windows. Uh, for the Windows side, this should work on Windows 7, 8, or 10. Um, on Windows 10, you do have another option, and I'll be going over that in another video. So what we want to do first is go to the site so that we can get the installer. Uh, that can be found at docker.com slash product slash docker dash toolbox. Once you're to the website, all we need to do is click on this download link for the Windows section and start our download. After you have the installer downloaded, let's start the installer and go through it. Um, so the first page that's going to show up is the welcome screen and you have the option of helping Docker improve toolbox. This is entirely up to you. Next. Um, this will be the location that you want Docker to be installed. I don't use the C drive for a lot of my installations and I would rather use an E drive. So that's where I'm going to put my Docker installation. From here, I'm just wanting to pick the full installation. So I'm good with all of these settings and I'm gonna go forward. Then here, um, you're going to want to pick based upon your preference. Um, create desktop shortcut. I mean, that's up to you. I prefer not to have the shortcuts. Add Docker binaries to path. That's a good idea to have. Upgrade. Boot to Docker VM. Yeah, I probably want that. And then install VirtualBox with NDIS 5 driver when it defaults to the 6. This is because uh, driver 5 um, doesn't seem to have as many problems as 6 does. I mean, this is entirely up to you. But there have been issues uh, where Windows hosts fail to start in your Docker or your boot to Docker VM when you're using the six. And I also need a virtualization environment, so I want them to install VirtualBox, and I'm going to click next, and then finalization and install. And so now it's going to go through the installation process and install all of the components that are inside of the Docker Toolbox uh, installer. If you don't have Git, this will also install Git on your computer. And once it's done, you can uh, close out. I don't want to view the shortcuts in my file explorer, so I'm just going to say finished. Now that we have Docker installed, let's verify the installation. Go in here and go to Docker Quick Start Terminal. And then we'll open that application. And it's going to run through the initialization process that it needs uh, to get Docker up and running on your machine for the first time. You might have to verify a few interfaces depending on your Windows security settings. Once Docker is initially set up, you're going to be given a Docker shell. This is one of the options that you have um, to interact with Docker. You can now go and type Docker into here, and it's going to come out and it's going to verify to me that I do have Docker um, up and running. It gives me all the commands uh, that I need to run Docker commands. This isn't the only option though that we have. We can also open command here and in command I can also run docker and I have the same same uh, settings here as well. Um, once again uh, we have of course our handy dandy PowerShell Oops, docker and we can see we can interact with docker here. Um, in my opinion PowerShell and command are a little bit harder to interact with the Docker commands just because of the copy and paste scenarios that you're stuck with um, for command and PowerShell, but that's all based on preference. Um, the last one that we have is because it did install Git, there's an application on your computer now called Git Bash. Git Bash is going to give you somewhat of a um, Unix emulator. So now here, we also have the uh, Docker commands that we're able to run. We also have one more area where we're able to verify the Docker is now up and running. And that's if you go into, here let me show you in the terminal. 
virtual, Oracle VM virtual box. If you open this up, you'll see that you actually have a VM running. And this is Docker. If we open this up, we can now see the uh, Docker container running. And we can run Docker commands in here as well. Now that we have Docker Toolbox installed and configured, let's uh, let's try it out. So I'd like to start out with a couple Docker commands that we're going to be need to be familiar with. The first one is Docker images. That'll show us any image any Docker images that we have on our machine. Right now I don't have any. We just installed it. The other, the other one is Docker PS. This will show us any running containers that we have on our machine and Docker PS A, and that'll show us any containers we have running on our machine, regardless of whether or not uh, the container is active. So what we're going to do is do a Docker run. This is a good tutorial, and of course, good old hello world. If I can spell. All right. What this is going to do is it's going to go through up here. It's it says, "Hey, we didn't find that image locally on your machine. We need to pull it." So it's going to go out into the Docker registry and it's going to see if it can find um, this hello world that we're trying to uh, this hello world image that we're trying to run. So it goes out and it downloads it, and then it's going to run it and it goes through and gives us this acknowledgement that we have indeed ran a docker um, image. So now if we do docker images we're going to see that hello world um, image um, as well as if we do docker ps shouldn't be running anymore. We should be able to see that it did run and that it has exited. Okay, <clears throat> And so that's how we do that. And then um, say so, so how this is used, say um, you want Ubuntu, right? So we can also do what is called a Docker pull. And well, what do I want to pull? Well, maybe I don't fully know. So let's do a search. I want to do a Docker search for Ubuntu. Okay. And this is going to go out and look. And so right here, what we actually have is images that have Ubuntu in them. So right here, we can see that there are a couple of official ones, and then there are ratings. Um, and then out here uh, are ones that, you know, somebody has created or however it managed to get out there. Um, and in this case, it's, well, um, how, do, how do we, what is it that we really want here? And so let's do a Docker poll um, Ubuntu. Right? Do we just want any Ubuntu or do we want 1404, 1604, or do we just want the latest? Because what this is going to do is this is going to go out and do a darker pull for Ubuntu. So let's see how this does it. It goes out there and it pulls the latest. So we're going to sit here and download the Ubuntu image that's tagged as latest. Now, once it's done downloading, we can then do a Docker images again. And we can see we now have Ubuntu latest and we have the Hello World image. Let's go ahead and make sure what Ubuntu image we have because Ubuntu latest, we can go to the documentation and find out which one it is. But let's say I like Ubuntu 1604, okay? So, what we want to do is we want to do another Docker pull. Okay, Ubuntu, and then we want to tag it. So we want to do a colon. We want to tag it with uh, the version number. So I want this to be 16.04. Okay, we're going to do that, and it's going to come back, and you can see that it really didn't pull much in this case, um, if anything. So let's check that out, Docker Images. So here you'll notice we've got two different tags. We've got Ubuntu 16.04 and Ubuntu latest. But you'll also notice that the image ID here is the same. 
So in other words, we have the same image, which is why it didn't download anything extra up here, but it's tagged with two different tags. This is 1604, and it is also the latest. So if we want to see how this, how this works now, if we go back up here and we do a Docker pull for 1404, say, this is actually going to go through and it's going to be downloading us a new image. And once this is done, we'll see that it is Ubuntu. It's tagged as 1404, but the image ID will be different because it is actually a different image. Once again, Docker images, and we have all of those images now. Okay, so that's great and all. We've pulled these images. What should we do with these images? Well, let's just do a quick example run of this. Let's do Docker help to find out uh, what we need to run. So in here, what are the, what are the options that we have? Um, one of the options is a Docker run. So let's do more help here, right? Um, what do we want to do? We want to run this in an interactive mode. So we need dash I so that we can interact with it. And we also want to run it in the terminal, so we want a dash T. So let's do docker run dash IT. We can put the commands together like this. And then we want to do um, Ubuntu. Now, if I just leave it like this, it's going to do Ubuntu latest. So if we want to specify which one, we would do the tag 1604, you know, 1404. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to do Ubuntu. And then we're going to come over here um, and specify how we want to run this. Uh, I think by default it does bash, but I'm going to make sure that it does in this case. So we'll do that. And right now it says root at the image ID, okay? Or just a hash value. I'm not sure if it's truly the image ID. If we scroll back up here, I think the image ID was different. This is probably the container ID. Um, so if we then exit out, let's verify that this is the container ID. We're going to exit, okay? That leaves the running container. So now if we do a docker ps, nope, it's not there. So let's do a docker ps dash a, and it did terminate, and that right there is actually the container ID that we were in. So you were inside of that I, that container. So let's, let's run that again. And you can see if we do an ls, we're inside of an Ubuntu server. And that is the basics of how to run a Docker image. But now, um, if we're looking Docker images, we have downloaded, you know, a significant size. These, these images have to be stored somewhere. Um, we don't want them anymore, right? And so what we can do is we can do a Docker. Um, first off, we want to remove the containers. So we do Docker PS, and we see the containers. We want to do a Docker RM, and we want to remove the containers. Um, one way is by ID. So that's how I'm going to do it here. Okay, and it'll come back, and it'll show these containers have been removed. So if we do a docker ps-a again, there should be nothing in docker ps, there are no running containers. So now we have the uh, images to deal with, right? So we have the four images. I don't want any of these four images on my computer anymore. I'm going to do a docker rmi. Now um, I'm going to do a, a force here uh, just to make sure that they all get cleaned up. But if you don't do the force, uh, it'll go out and check and say, hey, there's something still running, so I couldn't remove this. But in this case, I know that I've cleaned up, and I know that I want to get rid of them. So I'm going to do this image ID, and this is a duplicate image ID, so uh, just a different tag. So I'm going to go to down to the next one, and then the next one. So that should be three of them. goes through, untags them, deletes them, docker images, and I am now cleaned up. All right, so... That's kind of what I wanted to show you guys in this basics Docker video. Like I said, I'll go through another one for the uh, other method for Windows 10. 
um, and kind of go through some of these same basics just in case somebody didn't watch this video. Thanks for your time, guys.